All right, what's going on, everybody? Um, you know, once again, um, I just had to let y'all know. Of course, you know, I'm Chase. You know, owner of Scorpio and Tibet Universe. That's the name of this channel. And a lot of you all probably wonder why did he change the name from Great Murderer to Scorpio and Tibet? Well, Scorpio and Tibet is basically my brand that I started, and um, and it basically represents everything that I've always wanted to do over the years, which is like have my own independent like business basically where it, it didn't matter if i was doing cleaning which i have like a, a cleaning business it didn't matter if it was doing like movies which is what i'm doing now like my own films and stuff it really didn't matter what it was merchandise all of it and i have all that right now so i i had always wanted to have some type of system set up where i could do that and um and then around like 2014 um I just had the idea. I was like, I wanted to come up with a, with, with my own like, uh, production company basically, because I had already been making all the YouTube videos and I'm going to go into that later on. But uh, I had already been making all the, the frustrated game review videos. I had already started to learn more about editing because when I started actually doing these videos, as you guys know, in the very beginning, I had no idea what I was really doing. All I really knew was to get an old, um, I had an old DCR camera. Uh, that basically record on um, mini DV, um, uh, DVDR disc. And then it recorded probably, you know, at like a 420 resolution. I mean, the resolution wasn't that good, but it worked for the time. And Sony always made good cameras. So I always, you know, made sure I had to have like a Sony camera. And I thought I could just push record and then everything was there. And, you know, that's pretty much what I had always done before because prior to making the game reviews, I had all um, used to make like we used to be like recording basketball games and stuff when I was younger and um, but but I didn't really know much about editing. I got into this. I learned it, you know, got good at it. And I realized, you know, I could actually use this skill to do other things. And I've done, you know, plenty of other projects under the name Scorpio and Sebek. So I figured I have to start my own business name, but I don't want to call it, you know, some basic name. So I know a lot of you all are probably wondering, well, what does Scorpio and Sebek even mean? I mean, of course, you know, Scorpio is you know the one of the signs that's a part of the zodiac and a lot of what a scorpio has to deal with is death and regeneration and i feel like you know throughout my life i'm always in the process of dying and regenerating ideas you know old thoughts old ha uh, patterns old habits and um basically regenerating into a whole new platform that that i could spawn and that other people will be able to spawn off of as well so that was, that's like the scorpio side of what my business represents. And then of course that's my actual blood sign, you know, saying so that also has a lot to do with, 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 um, with the scorpion represents for my brand. I, I feel like I have, um, I have to really show what this thing is about through like a symbol and the only symbol I can really see are animals. So, you know, the animal, of course, that, that definitely I have to show within my brand is the scorpion, which is also a part of my blood sign, which is Scorpio. And the Sebek also comes from, um, Egyptian culture, which is, you know, similar to what the, uh, the scorpion is. And it even goes even further back to stuff that, you know, that a lot of people probably won't even know about way going back to, to Atlantis and, you know, what people were worshiping back then. But anyway, like Sebek is just basically this crocodile slash human deity. And he represents, you know, like he represents more of the, the, the foundation and the solitude that that my business has to have as well. So, you know, of course, nothing is more fierce and more vicious than a crocodile. And that, as that crocodile actually is real, you know, that is actually like an actual uh, deity. So, and if you actually, if you've ever seen like pictures of, um, of Horus that they found like back in, um, I want to say like in the early uh, or the late, um, 19th century, it was found by this guy, uh, Champollion, who was on uh, Napoleon's brother. They had went down to like Africa. And they had discovered like these tombs and they, and then if one of those tombs, they found this picture or this sculpture of Horus and he was like standing by two crocodiles and he had like these two scorpions, uh, that were within his hand. And it was really interesting when I saw that because, uh, I had literally never seen or heard about this, this artifact being found. And, um, you know, I had already had came up with that name in 2014. And I saw that picture in 2015. So that's when I saw, wow, like it's almost like I'm like becoming like the Christ hero for this whole business. So that's pretty much where the whole Scorpio and Sebet came from. It's, it's like a whole deep 
mythology that's behind it. And it's like, you know, really a part of like what I think represents like what I've always had wanted to do as well. It just never had a name to it. It just became the name Scorpio and Sibet Universe, which is basically branching off to a lot of other things that that uh, I'm going to be doing as well. So, you know, to just go into that, that's pretty much what my whole thing was about. Um, Like I said, I had always made movies when I was younger. I always had the idea of wanting to make a movie. Um, and I, I, my first um, uh, reason of wanting to make films, I think, was when I first had seen Rumble in the Bronx and Mortal Kombat in theaters back in like 1994. 1996 when I, I remember when I saw Mortal Kombat 1 in theaters that's kind of when I first wanted the idea of wanting to make a movie I didn't know what what it took I didn't know anything about like what to do or any of that but I remember when I saw that movie and just how they put so many ideas into that along with the idea and the concept of something that that had to do with you know a crazy mythology story I just thought, man, like it would be really, really cool to to actually do that for real and like make a living off of that. It's like at like four or five years old, that's what I actually thought I could do. But I had no idea how to do it. I just knew I had to get a camera and actually just start making ideas because I just started coming up with different stories and stuff. But I could never get a camera. And, um, you know, to go even into a little personal history with my own um, thing with becoming independent. I had always wanted to get a camera, I remember, but, um, you know, I could never get the money. And I remember one time I had the money and I was in high school. I remember I was in ninth grade and it was a dude that that had, he was in my uh, PE class and dude had actually, um, had a camera at the time, but this was like in 2006. I didn't know anything about using digital cameras. I didn't know anything about memory cards and USB transferring. The only thing I knew was to reuse the uh, the mini DV tapes, uh, record it on a bit tape, and then show everybody that came to your house. I was still used to that, but this was in 06, so he actually had that. And I figured, you know, I could just purchase that from him and everything would be good. But I remember the guy, I had gave the guy some money, and, um, you know, and, and he, he was supposed to give me the camera back. And I had, you know, used it for the day, but he didn't give me the charger because he didn't have the charger for it. And I remember I had gave the guy some money. And somebody had stole the camera from him, but he didn't really want to be a man and just tell me, you know, the fact that he had got jailed for it. And he kept lying to me, saying that he was going to give it to me. He was going to give it to me, but he could never get it. And he never would like, you know, tell me what was actually going on. And I remember like I could never get a camera for the longest because that was one of the things that happened. And then it just so happened there was a dude that had sold me a camera for like thirty dollars or something like that. And that's when I had actually started like, you know, getting into filming and stuff. So it was always like it was something hindering me, you know, from trying to become independent. You know, that's why I just wanted to make this video to show people like when you when you start independence, it's always going to be like something that's going to try to like hinder you from like wanting to to try to do the idea. And, um, you know, that was just my little personal story. And then even when um when I wanted to do my game reviews, like a lot of people look at my reviews and they think that, um. That, that I copied or, or at least anybody that does the little game review stuff on the internet that everybody pretty much emulated the, um, the, the guy, the angry video game nerd, which is true. You know, I mean, he was the birth of all this stuff, but, um, honestly, I didn't really know. I had always had the idea of something like what I'm doing now. I had always had that idea since like 2002. Cause in 2002, that's when I actually started getting back into retro gaming. Cause at that time I remember I, my Sega was gone and I had lost all my games that I used to have. I had the Power Rangers. I had all my um, original Sega games, but I, ne I hadn't played them in like years. And in 2002, I remember I used to like watch TV and used to notice like game shows. I was like, it would be cool if somebody had like a game show where they were just talking about like older video games. But that was just in the back of my mind. And then years went on. And honestly, in like 2010, when I had first got my digital camera and I had the idea of like, you know, I wanted to start like doing another concept of, of stuff I wanted to do, like with my uh, video production stuff. And I had seen this guy named Urinating Tree. Um, uh, and, and I think his, um, I, th I think his, his, his actual like title name was the fat man judge of, and this guy was like one of the early YouTube viewers. And I first seen this guy in like 2010 when I started doing my reviews. 
And I thought his videos were like the funniest videos I had ever seen. Like he had a review. I remember on, on, on all the NBA, um, basketball games. It was like on the, um, it was on, what was that game? It was, it was like NBA, um, eco, like basketball. They had played, it was like the USA Olympics 92 dream team. He had reviewed that game. He had reviewed the NBA showdown series and he had reviewed like the early Lakers versus Bulls and, and Lakers versus Celtics games. And I had never seen nobody talk about that. And I thought that was like the funniest thing in the world. And I thought, you know, that actually seems like a good idea. Cause at the time, you know, people were, were making those videos. They were popular and people thought they were actually funny. But even in 2010, the idea was already dried up, but I still had decided to do it anyway. So, um, you know, I, I did, I, I had all seen his videos. And then I remember it was like March of 2010. I remember all uh, that guy, Jackass Jimmy, by the way, he was, um, he was a friend of mine. He was in my, um, integrated science class when I was down at, um, at, at Georgia Southern. And I remember that, um, like he used to basically like we were always like meet in this little, um, computer technology um, lab before our class. And we would just watch internet videos at the time. And I told him about urinating tree. And I remember he had said, oh, oh, man, you never heard of the angry video game nerd? And I was like, who is that? And then he had showed me the guy's Dick Tracy review. And then that's when I had seen all of his videos. And I thought, hey, if it's anybody that I've seen that has the similar ideas that I've had to do, like the concept of like a video game show or something like that, it's this guy. So I saw pretty much what he did. And I realized, hey, I could just pretty much take that format of what he did and just, you know, do it my way. And then that's when I started making my video. So it's like, it's, that's another thing I wanted to just talk about is just, you know, when you're doing independent things, you have to kind of see what's worked. You know, it's nothing wrong with taking somebody's idea that that's actually done something that worked. And, you know, and you, and you just are, you know, basically taking your own thing and, and remodeling it. It's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know. I mean, it's so many, it's so many film directors and film producers over the years who, who were influenced by people that were years before them that it's impossible to really say they would be as great as they are if nobody else had done what they had done before. So, you know, I, I, you can't really be afraid for the fact that people may say that you, you're going to do something that somebody had already done. And then you, they may say you're copying them. You can't be really afraid of that. Cause I noticed that's one of the biggest fears. I've noticed with a lot of people that try to do stuff independently, um, you know, they, they always have that fear, like, you, you know, like that, that somebody's going to notice that they've done something that somebody else has did. But it's like, so what, you know, as long as you're doing something that's at your angle and it's different from what, you know, from, from, from what somebody else has done because of your own experience, then people will be able to understand that. So I don't think that that should be like a, a big fear of people, but. I, you know, this is just going to be like one of the first tapes that I'm going to make of like a lot of different uh, topics that I'm going to discuss involving like people that w really want to try to go independent. Because I see a lot of people on YouTube talk about how you can make an independent cleaning business or you can make it an independent um business like doing videos or, you know, or doing something that seems like it's real easy to do. And you could get into it and make a lot of money, but it's, it's a lot more that goes into just actually doing it besides, you know, having some money and then jumping right into it. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to be able to, um, to, to bring you guys into a new light and a new idea of, um, of, of what Scorpion and Tibet universe is going to represent. Of course, I'm going to still make my game reviews and other little gaming, um, different gaming type videos, but this is something that is quite different. And it is actually to help people and get you guys to understand that you can actually do things that you probably always imagine you could do. I mean, as, as I've shown, you know, as you've heard my story and the things that I've done over the years and have seen, you know, and you've actually seen my failures and my successes with it. So, you know, this is going to be the first of many, but I just want y'all to stay tuned and be, be prepared because this is your only way to sell to your independence. But stay tuned.